this short story is called The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. Shirley Jackson is an American author. She was born in San Francisco, California. She was born in 1916 and passed away in 1965. She is known primarily as a writer who focuses on mystery, horror, and the unconventional. Uh, the lottery short story itself is a fictional, meaning it's a not real story, uh, which was first published on June 26, 1948. Some of the people have labeled it as one of the most famous short stories of all time. Uh, the author gives a vivid depiction of a small town in the United States. The town itself is not uh, particularly mentioned, specifically mentioned, um, where people of a village follow an annual tradition. They call this tradition the lottery. Now, this lottery that is discussed in this short story is not a typical lottery as we would assume. The short story has gained a lot of criticism over the years for its grotesque and terrifying nature, but we do have to remember that the story itself is not real. It is not based on actual real events. The story itself is quite shocking and does have a very, uh, very traumatizing ending, uh, something that we would definitely would not expect. Now, if I go into any more detail right now, I will be giving easily giving away the story. So I'm going to leave it at that right now because I do want you to read the short story. Uh, and as well, there actually is a short film for the short story, which is depicts a fairly accurate, uh, accurate interpretation of Shirley Jackson's actual text. So I will have you read the short story and then watch the film as well. I do want to comment on the irony in the story. There are many different things that are super ironic in the story. Um, when I go through the short answer discussion questions, I will talk a little bit more because there is a question about irony. Um, but some people say that it is ironic that the short story itself was first published on June 26th. That's the date it was released when in fact, this is the date that Shirley Jackson has the story taking place. The actual lottery itself takes place on June 27th, but the night before, which would be June 26th, is when two of the characters prepare the annual ritual uh, tradition and get everything ready for the following day. So when you're reading and listening to and viewing the, the short story, uh, take that into consideration. Is this date significant? Did Shirley Jackson purposely set the story on June 26th? Uh, and did she purposely have the, the story published and released on that same day? I just wanted to quickly point out the YouTube film. So if you go to YouTube in the search bar, type in the lottery Shirley Jackson film, click search. It will be the first one that comes up. It's 18 minutes long. It's The Lottery, Shirley Jackson, 1969 short film. You will note in YouTube that there is many different versions. I would like you to watch this one. So make sure this is the picture you're seeing and it's 18 minutes. It is the most accurate depiction uh, of the film to the uh, short story itself. There is many other uh, options that you could watch on YouTube, which you're more than welcome to watch, but just know that this is the most accurate depiction. So when answering the questions and understanding it, this is the one to make sure you've at least viewed. All right, by now you should have read or listened to Shirley Jackson's short story, The Lottery. As well, I highly encourage you to uh, view the 18 minute short film on YouTube as well. It does give a very accurate depiction of Shirley Jackson's uh, short story. Uh, they are very similar, so I do encourage you to view that as well. Uh, now for the discussion questions. Number one says, what would you do if someone in your family won the lottery? How would you feel? What would you do if you won the lottery? And how would you feel? Now, this question needs to be in relationship, in relation to the story, not the idea of what we consider a lottery now. In today's day and age, we consider a lottery, you buy a ticket uh, with numbers on it and you hope that you match the numbers and win money or prizes. The lottery that Shirley Jackson talks about in her story is very, very different. You have to decide, would you want to win that kind of lottery? Would you want your family to win that kind of lottery? How would you feel? Number two, describe in detail the setting of the short story. How does the setting affect the events of the story and explain? So Shirley Jackson uh, paints a very clear picture of what the setting of the story looks like. She does that very early on in her, in her writing. 
Uh, so I want you to describe that setting. How does it feel? Um, what mood do we get from reading uh, about her setting? Number three, what is the tone of the short story at the beginning? What is the tone at the end? How does the tone change? So the tone essentially is, is how does the story, how does it make us feel? What is the mood that we are put in? Or what are the mood that the characters are put in? So at the beginning of the story, just as a hint, uh, the mood is quite calm, quite relaxed. Some people are maybe on edge, but they're just kind of going with the flow. They know this is how things are. It's a really nice, bright, sunny day, as, just, as the setting describes. But uh, over the course of the story, the mood does drastically change. Uh, and I want you to say what the mood is like at the end, because the mood is night and day um, at the end versus how it was at the beginning. Next question, number four. What is the main purpose of the lottery and explain? So we know that this lottery has been a tradition in this village for many, many, many years. Uh, so why do they have this lottery? Why have they kept this lottery going all these years? Number five, what do people in the story think about the lottery? So you'll notice when you read and when you view uh, the short story, people don't seem to have too much of an opinion about the lottery. There is a few people in the town that love the lottery, one person in, speci uh, in specifically, he just loves it. Um, but everyone else, they don't really voice their opinion. So I want you to try to read between the lines and decipher how people in the, law, people in the story, um, what do they think about the lottery? Do they like it? Do they not? Do they just go with it because they feel like they have to? And number six, over the years, some villagers and towns have dropped, villages and towns have dropped the idea of a lottery. On page four, Mrs. Adams says, some places have already quit lotteries. But then old man Warner responds to her by saying, nothing but trouble in that. Why is this statement ironic? Um, I don't wanna give you away the answer, um, so I want you to try to read between the lines and figure out why this is ironic. Uh, if you're not sure what the word irony is, please look it up. I will be talking more about it, but I want you to look that word up and see if you can come up with an idea. Number seven, has the lottery in Tessie's village changed over the years? If so, in what ways? So the lottery is a very stagnant thing, meaning it just happens every year. It stayed the same, but there is something small that has changed. I just want you to see if you can figure out what that is and tell me. Number eight wants you to describe a couple characters, three of them actually, in fact, in the short story. So I want you to describe Tessie. Tell me maybe what you think she looks like, if there's any hints in the story, how she acts, uh, maybe her relationship to some of the other characters. I want you to also do that for Bill, uh, for Old Man Warner, and for Mr. Summer. Sorry, there's actually four there that you need to uh, describe. Number nine, the characters in the story, minus Tessie, all seem calm and relaxed during the lottery as though it is a natural occurrence each year. How would you present yourself if you were there? So like I mentioned, the story at the beginning especially is very calm, very relaxed, just everyone's just very neutral. How do you think if you were in the same situation, again, in as a relationship into this as the story, not in relation if you actually were taking a part in a lottery today, uh, if you were, if you put yourself in that situation, in that exact setting, in that circumstance, how would you feel? Would you be calm and relaxed or would you be on edge? Would you go crazy and be screaming and crying and yelling? What would your reaction be? Next question, number 10. The tradition of the lottery is that the villager is, is something that the entire village participates in. Do you think it's right for children and youth to have to participate? Explain. Uh, why or why not? That's pretty straightforward. Number 11, did the ending of the story surprise you? Why or why not? By reading the title of the story, is this the ending you would anticipate? So if you've never read this short story before and never uh, Googled the summary or whatever uh, to get some hints about what it was about, did the ending surprise you? Obviously by, by hearing the title, this is not something that I would have expected and I don't think probably most of you would have either. Uh, so what ending would you have expected? You can comment on that as well. Uh, number 12, does the color of the box and the color of the dot foreshadow anything about the end of the story? Why or why not? So there's a definition there of foreshadow. It means to be of warning or indication of a future event. So the idea of the color of the dot, which I'm not going to tell you what color that was, 
Uh, does that foreshadow, does that show any indication on what happens at the end of the story? Uh, if I tell you the color of the dot, I think the answer will be easily given away. So I want you to figure that one out by yourself.